Bonjour tout le monde. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Raymond James Irwin. I'm the chief champagne officer and founder of Biz Champagne Bar and Club. And I have the privilege today to be joined with Alice Payard of Uno Payard Champagne House in Reims, uh, France, um, the, the home, the cœur de, de Champagne right now. So, Alice, thank you so much for being with us. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, Raymond. Thank you for having me. It's very nice to chat from the other side of the world. I know. It's amazing. We can still do this, right? We can still bring it. We can still have the champagne together, you know, our, our aperitif hour and still talk fizz, my favorite thing to do. That's very true. It's, it's, a, it's a good hour for both of us. So that's, 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 that's the most important thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's, it's at nine o'clock there and you're, you're, at, you're still at the Maison, n'est-ce pas? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but you know, ho hopefully nobody is going to control me on the way back. And uh, if so, you know, I will, I will, I, I will explain the situation. But, just uh, always have a couple of bottles of champagne in the car for the police, Nespa. You just always here's, you know, <laughs> a petit cadeau. <laughs> So you know what they're very kind and what they may do sometimes when this is sometimes when i stay late and they see some light it has happened in fact during lockdown last year march april when you know everything was completely locked several times like they, they, they rang and say is, it, is everything okay and, and no no we're we're not very kind so, well yeah. today i'm so excited we're getting to talk about um one of my favorite champagnes that you have brought in recently or that we had and that our club was able to have this past month, the 2006 Midi May, the 2006 vintage and uh, just the beautiful packaging that we've been showing. I think you have the bottle. I have the last glass here. Um, let's please show this beautiful. Yeah, I can, I can thank you actually, because I haven't tasted this bottle in two years. Wild. Because, well, that's always the thing. When we work on a wine, first we, we, we work a lot at the time of blending, then we we have to forget it and let, leave him go through his life in the cellar, let him go through his maturation, for, for, forget about him for a few years and then go back to it, taste it, judge about the dosage, etc. follow the evolution for the few last moments before we think it's right to be released. And then, then we release it. So for, for a few, uh, for, 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 for like 12 months period, we taste it very intensely Yes. And then nothing anymore. <laughs> and, 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 and the wine flew out very quickly. So we had to, we had to uh, save and keep the, the last bottles for the house memory. So it's, it's been out of the, of, of, of the market now for, for a few months. And so, uh, voilà. so that, is, that is the bottle, which is, um, as always, at Champagne Bruno Payard, uh, illustrated with an uh, artwork from a contemporary artist. Um, and in this case, he's a Swedish artist called Joachim Nordstrom. If, if some of you have the bottle, you can see his name yeah. is stated precisely underneath the art piece and on the back level. So you can look out for his work if you like it. He's, he's very uh, uh, recognized uh, Swedish artist working mostly a lot with papers, um, collage. He works with very humble raw material, but in a very poetic manner, uh, very inspired by poetry, actually, by music as well. Uh, quite, a, quite a complete character, a complete figure. So, so, talk, so talk, Alice, because I know it's really neat that you guys do a different uh, painting and, and you commission a different one for, for each vintage. And I know the 08 looks very different than the 06. So talk about, you know, why this was chosen for the 06. Yeah, yeah, well, the, the reason why um, so I'm, I'm opening the bottle, right? <laughs> Am I the only one doing that? S'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît, après vous. Um, the, the, the reason why we do that is because you know in Champagne that we work on a selection of terroirs and right. we practice the notion of assemblage. Uh, assemblage, blending is not about taking many things and putting everything together and, you know, without any discerning uh, decisions. Assemblage is, is about uh, choosing what you want to say uh, and, and, and composing a wine. So uh, that's most of the, the champagnes produced are from an assemblage of, of years, of vintages, as you well know. So the, the fact of, of producing single vintage, like this bottle is, 2006, is an exception um, more than a rule. 
And, and uh, so we don't produce vintages every often at Maison BP, and not, not every year. I mean, sometimes it's two years in a row, and sometimes it's nothing for four years. Right. Actually, this is the latest blanc de blanc vintage we produced, after which there was none until 2012 blanc de blanc, which we wow. released last September. So, um, so you it's see a waiting period. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, I well, and, and they, they, they have to hurry because I kept a few cases for the US, but with what happened last year, everything slowed down in the US, but not in Europe. And in, and in Asia, step, step went, went fast. And so it was difficult to keep the wine going. Yes. Um, so, so that's how we choose. Um, the word for the, for, the, for, for, for the artist comes from the wine. We taste the wine. Uh, at the moment when we consider it's ready to be released. And it is a character, the personality of the wine that will deliver a couple of words or one word. And, and with these words in hand, we will look for an artist which um, universe would embody the character of the wine. So, oh six, 6 because that's what's your question. It's, it's not easy to translate because in French, we called it volupté. Oui, mais hey. um, <laughs> when translated uh, it, it, in, in French, of course, volupté, it, there is this beautiful poetry from yes. Baudelaire, which says, ici, tout n'est cordre et beauté, luxe, calme et volupté. Mm. So I will translate it the wrong way, of course, but it says, it's this sense of here, everything is about order and beauty luxury, serenity, and volupté. So it's this idea of plenitude, this idea of generosity, this idea of, of the, the type of volupté you would find in the Garden of Eden, when everything is here, everything is complete, and everything is offered to you. Um, so it's, it's really in this idea. And I, actually, that's really how Joachim Nordstrom worked, because you, you can see um, uh, it's um, trees in the form of, of fruits, of generosity, and, and, and the composition of a garden. Um, voilà. and, and, and this is 06. That's, that's really the character of that vintage. Um, very, very nice and interesting vintage for Chardonnay, particularly. It was, we didn't do an assemblage in 06. We didn't work. Uh, with Pinot Noir uh, vintage uh, or, or Meunier, we really chose to focus on what was best for us on that year, which was the Chardonnay clearly. And here, only Chardonnay is coming from Côte des Blancs. Uh, uh, so not all Grand Cru, because Côte des Blancs finishes with Vertu, which, which is Premier Cru. So you have Grand and Premier Cru in that bottle, but Menil, Auger, Vertu, a bit of uh, Avis and Cramon as well. So. Good places. Very good places. <laughs> plenty on uh, plenty on chalk. Voilà. Yes. That's, that's, uh, that's and bring that actually at least bring that closer because I think that is good. I talk a lot about the chalky soils in in the in the Cote Blanc, and that is why it's in there. It's really this beautiful white chalk that you could yeah, as you see on her fingers. I mean, it's like you could write with it. It's just crazy. Absolutely. That's but you, you have a you've had for 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 very long time. Um, um, uh, fabrics for the, the, the chalks for school here. And you see it's very, um, it, it can be detached very easily. Yeah, uh, crumples, crumbles. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And, and <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you grab a piece, uh, I'm not going to do that in my glass of champagne, but oh. when you put it in the water, uh, it's very interesting because the first thing you see is many, many small uh, bubbles of oxygen exiting the, the chalk piece because it's actually very, um, it, it has a lot of air, a lot of space within it. Uh, yes. it. And so that's why it acts as a beautiful uh, water reserve uh, yeah. for the vine, which, which, is in, which has always been important in Champagne because the paradox is that we have a continental and ocean climate, but we have. And obviously, it's more and more important. Uh, yes, as things go. Well, wonderful. So then, 
let's talk a little bit more about this. It's smelling so good. And I think it is vraiment volupté. And I think it is very mm. gracious. And 06 had that graciousness to it, didn't it? There's this roundness, this fullness to it. That's, that's a nice way to put it for 06. Yeah, it could have been another world, another yeah. word. I, I don't know if I hope, I hope the, the people who have joined us uh, have that bottle as well. So first thing, of course, is that character of 06. Second thing is the aging we give to the wine. Huh? It's been 06 harvest is gorge in 2015. So the wine had nine years autolysis, so nine years to enrich itself in yes. the cellar. And it had extra edge after this disgorgement. This is something we cherish very much at, at Maison BP. My, my father, uh, since the very beginning, wrote the date of disgorgement on the back label of every bottle because, well, because just like you, obviously, we consider champagne is a wine and we consider you can choose if you want to cellar it, how long you want to cellar it, etc. But for that, you need to have the information. So. I, I, that's probably the same bottle you have because yep. we, we only did one or, or two disgorgements uh, for, for this wine. So that means it has been disgorged um, six years now. So it has had, no, of course, plenty of time to recover from the surgery of disgorgement because disgorgement is traumatic for the wine. But also after that, it has had time to develop now more towards the tertiary aroma. So, so this uh, generosity and plenitude sensation is enhanced by that. So we have the first, well, the color of course first is more intense than when it was just released, when it was not a collection one yet, uh, of course, because it has a little heat of green, but a little thicker, a little deeper. The first nose has a beginning of age uh, when you start smelling a little bit of the nuttiness that is a sign of course of, of entering the tertiary notes of the wine but and that's when it's the any champagne i'm just speaking of this champagne i mean generally speaking when you have a hint of that it's very interesting provided it doesn't take all of course if it takes all the glass it means that it has the wine is gone when I, when it's a hint of it and then behind you have all the, the, the fruitiness and power of the wine expressing that's that's when it's very interesting well, so and it's, it's it's about that balance, right? It's about this balance, the equilibre, and it's about making sure that you're getting this this purity, you're getting the sensation of the of the fruit, you're getting the acid, you're getting this body, you're getting the tertiary. It, it's it's this gorgeous blend, and and even though we're not blending multiple years, we're blending multiple parcels. And I mean, I know you taste with your father hundreds of different things to figure out the right blend for each wine. It's incredible. Absolutely, you know, it. it it, it is a blend, and, and, and it is the notion of blend also for terroir, absolutely what? right. So here we have the impression of the of almost a candied orange skin, yes. huh? very yeah. concentrated, um, uh, very dense. Uh, we have also the cedar wood notes, the, the, um, the, the little, the beginning of honey notes that will come mm -hmm. with more age, even, but it starts now, and a little bit of. So torrefaction as well, but these are these will come, you know, in another five or, or eight years. But uh, they are just starting. But what we have, is, yeah, the candied orange. We have also the vegetal freshness of, um, you know, the verbena leaves, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very the white pepper notes as well. The, all of these are elements of great liveliness, great energy. Uh, the well, wine. One thing I noticed, Alice, as soon as we got these bottles, and you know, I, I of course had to open one immediately, more, and uh, you know, tasting it was how fresh though, and still, and still youthful. I mean, this is still such a youthful wine. It's a kid, I'd say, right? And the, I think the evolution that it will have is just so impressive. I mean, this is a bottle that's going to just see immense changes and development over the years. That's, I appreciate what you're saying. It, it will, uh, as long as I haven't yet put it on my palate, but I can guess already from the structure on the nose, um, as long as you have this balance and this, 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 this uh, acidity and this yes. uh, liveliness on the palate. Um, and that is, is about the, it's a, it's a combination of many things. It's the origin, it's the viticulture, it's the vinification. And, uh, and, and, and time and all of this together. That's also why we only make extra blue champagne. We want to have the low dose ash so that the wine can go far. But um, 
uh, all of this is linked. If you, if you change one element, you need to re-adapt the entire, uh, c'est comme un collier, c'est vraiment comme une chaîne. Voilà. Well, and so kind of talk to us about that because you mentioned two Attends, things. Raymond, tu as bu ou pas? Oui, je bu, je, je bois. Oh, je... Alors moi aussi, je bois. Merci. <laughs> While you've been speaking, I've been drinking, okay? Mm -hmm. Permette-moi, merci. <laughs> okay. Il est... Ouais. Il, est, il has almost become opulent, on dit en français. Yes, français. opulent, uh, yes. Okay, it's interesting because I haven't tasted it in a while to see the steam. Actually, voluptuous. Yes, it's, 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 a, it's a good word. <laughs> yes, you did well, bravo. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the theme sticks to it uh, very well today as well. It's, it's been, this, is, uh, this is fun for me to see how excited you are to taste this. Because right. you can tell, like, this is so good. <laughs> well, I, I, can, I can only say that because I joined in 2007, so I didn't make this wine. Oh. So I, <laughs> I, came back, I came back here in 2007. Uh, so that's, uh, but um, uh, no, no, I, I wouldn't send myself flowers saying how the wine is. Going. <laughs> that's, well, uh, come, ma'am. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's, that's uh, so what, what I wanted to say, but I mean, I'm sure you've experienced that many times, of course, because you taste champagne very regularly and intense and age champagne, but it's interesting to see with this density, it's an extra brut wine, yeah. low dosage, and Yet you have almost a sensation that it's sweet, but no, it's a concentration that comes from this post-disgorgement aging. Yes. You really have this phenomenon of concentrating the aroma uh, long after disgorgement, and, and you have almost this sensation that the wine is a little thicker on your palate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it has a nice viscosity to it. I really like the, the viscosity to it and, and how it coats and, and the texture. I think it's really, really just so beautiful in the front and the finish is so lovely. That minerality, the salinity, I think it just, it has this, it has this brownness, but still this forward lifted quality, right? Wouldn't you say? And the finish is key. You, yes. you mentioned salinity and you, you get that, that on the, on the upper side of your palate uh, yes. at the end of, um, at the end of the tasting and, and, and that is very important. And that's, we've all, I mean, we've, we've all had uh, wines that were very promising on the nose and with yeah. a very uh, wow effect and then very, very, very oh. fast moving. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the purity in the wine is, is the, the naturality in a way of, of the wine is something you can really feel. It's, it's like a crescendo. I mean, if, if you're yes. a musician, you know yes. that. Voilà. It starts gently and then it pushes on the sides of your palate as if it, as if its freshness wanted to, uh, to to speak louder and louder as seconds after you have sipped the wine, and that's that's a sign of that that the freshness is true in the wine because I say because of course you can fake freshness in wine right. if you want. So. And I think, yeah, I think that's a really good point, you know, and I think that goes really to the philosophy of, of you know, Votre Maison, right? So let's kind of dig more into that. Let's, because I, I build this as the quest for, for pure champagne, the quest for purity. And I know that is very, very big to, you know, the raison d'etre of, of who you all are. So talk about that quest for purity. How do you find that purity? What do you hone in on to get that purity? I just need a bit of inspiration. Yes. <laughs> no, I love, you know, I, I, I really like what you said with the word quest. Yes. I think when one does this work, we, it's, it's, it, we all, it's always paradoxical because you have at the same time, you need to have strong beliefs and the conviction, as we say in French. But you also need to be very humble because you you work with nature, uh, and so maybe you make the right decision, and so you have a positive impact because the decision has an impact on, on your on your vineyard, and then so your vineyard evolves, and so a few years later that decision that was a good one is not a good one anymore mm. because everything has changed, yeah. and so it's it's. Um, 
but that, that's that's a journey. And so the, 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 the word quest is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a right word because when we're working on the assemblage, you know, the, it's assemblage is the most complex thing to share yeah. because, because sometimes uh, one could think it's, you know, taking your, making your recipe and, and, and redoing the same thing every time. No, it's, it's adhering to that quest and that idea that guides you. And with that idea that guides you, be ready to make very, deci very different decisions each year because yeah. mother nature is very different each year. So, so well, it's, I don't know, Champagne is very diverse and I'm sure you show very, in a very detailed way in the club's diversity in terms of uh, grounds, soil orientation, because uh, it's not a very big vineyard, as you know, but it is spread vineyard. Mm -hmm. So it faces very different reality. And, and, and for us, and that's a personal, obviously, approach. It should be. It's our name on the bottle. For us, what, what we really seek is, is the talk. Uh, that's what we are interested in uh, the most. And so that the first step, the first step will be to focus where we have the stroke. The second step will be to create a unity and an exchange between the, the, the plant and its ground, because it's sadly, it's not obvious. It's not because the, the plant grows, gives a fruit that ripens, that there is a true communion. Of course, it is feeding and it's surviving, but all the process of mineralization uh, all the development of the microbiological life, not only is what will give an interesting fruit, but the good news is it's also what will uh, create a more interesting ground. It, it, it's a, it's a, a virtuous circle between the more active the, the plant is, the more active the ground is, right. and, and, and the more interesting the grape will be. So that's that, that. and then of course, working in the in the in the winery to preserve that in the best way possible so that means separate vinification of everything so we are free uh, the fact of keeping every every uh, cru pressings first pressing separated from second pressing separated is 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 um is important for freedom of, of selection because of mm -hmm. course at harvest we have intuitions but you know Patience is important. Uh, voilà. and, and of course, long aging and of course, low dosage. You know, also the fact that, uh, you know, the, uh, many, many things enter into which barrels do you use? How do you use more stainless steel? When do you think the wine is ready? Who? Who will you sell your wine to? Yeah. Because, because and where? Because if you, this is, if you choose to, um, Make it accessible in a in a how to say in 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 locations where there is not really a, a person to share the knowledge, etc. Uh, then uh, it, it's very it's very different. For, for us, naturally, the wines go where there is a great curiosity for wine in general, where there is a desire to to share and uh, voila. So everything is linked in this uh, quest. I'm sorry, that's a long reply. I no, know. I loved it. I was, I was just, just like this, just leaning, thinking. It's no, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, again, I haven't mentioned, but for everybody watching us, uh, if you have any questions for Alice about uh, Bruno Payard, about this 2006 Minisime, about anything that we're talking about, champagne, put in the chat box, and we will answer those questions. It's, it's just so wonderful hearing this, this process, um, Alice, and, and hearing everything that goes into it. And. You know, I want to just go back on on what you touched on in the vineyards, because I think a lot of people think, and especially an American kind of thought, is that everything is in the cellar, in the cellar, in the cellar. And how much, how important it is to have that focus on the vineyards and on 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 the, um, you know, the earth and, you know, that microbiology and, and the health of, of the terroir and, and how that does really go into the health of the plant and into the health of those grapes because you know if, if the dirt is hard as a rock you know that topsoil there's no life right it, you're not going to then have that life and the quality and the ageability and everything in your wine correct 
Ben, ouais, that's, uh, everything is linked. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 uh, and I think it's everything I'm, I'm very happy to share with you, but um, in, a, in a humble manner, because, because I don't have the, the truth <laughs> on that. And, uh, and we, we, we were, were, were sticking, sticking all the time. And uh, sometimes, we, sometimes we make uh, also our, our mistakes. But um, um, it, yeah, everything is linked. It's it's it starts in the vineyard. It's it's absolutely certain. But um, I cannot just say it's it's just the vineyards because you you can you can also ruin uh, you know you can ruin the work done in the vineyard if you're not very uh, very careful afterwards. So right. um, it's uh, I think I think that's. That's what I love about a house our size um, is that we are, we're small and not too small or big, but not too big. I don't know how you want to put it. If you compare us with a grower, we are larger, but we are maison. So that means we can both purchase grapes and own vineyards. What is very unusual is that we own great majority of the vineyards we use. So we, are, we, are, we farm ourselves. Um, the, the, more than the two thirds of our grapes, which which is why I can speak to you about farming with a true uh, uh, a true legitimacy to do so. I mean, half of our team here is working in the vineyards, but but it's also interesting to taste when you also have this cooperation with the same growers' families for forty years wow. in the same villages in the same parcel. It's also interesting to taste the others, you know, because particularly sometimes you have. Uh, vineyards in the same uh, village and uh, and I like because there are people we have been with for so long and for the right reason and we share values of course and uh, I like you know confronting our results with their results as well you know it's it's uh, it's it, I think it's a it's a good way to to stay um, uh, not not too self-centered sometimes it's always a risk you know to, when you work in your own thing all the time. How do well, you, in that, so when you are, you know, you have two thirds of your own vines, but you are, you're procuring from some long held contracts with some, some, some growers. How do you work theirs in, you know, when you are tasting the differences? I mean, I, I guess the answer is, you know, just assemblage, but I know there's more to it. How do you work their grapes in uh, to your grapes and, you know, their farming and in, into your farming? The, the, I am, um, I may, uh, the, the reply may, en français, désarçonné, may, the, uh, the truth is in the glass. Yeah. When I, I told you earlier that I came back, he, I came back uh, actually from New York <laughs> to Champagne um, in 2007 uh, to, to, to start working here and uh, working in the vineyards. Actually, I didn't even come back to Reims. I came back to Auger in the middle of Côte de Blanc. That's where I lived at the time work in the vineyards and I found out that we had some 2003 in the set and not only 2003 it was a heat wave a right. year so, but not even not a regular vintage GP 2003 we had one specific vintage 03 which was neck plus ultra our special cuvee our, our most absolute vinification our most, our most extreme wine so and I remember O3 like any, I don't know how it was in the US, but in, uh, in any What's European yeah. people was, you know, it was, it was the heat wave. It was a very strong heat wave. So I asked my father, I said, I mean, how come did you, did you, did you choose to make O3 and, 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 and make the Zucra? And it gave me, a, that, that day it gave me a great lesson because he told me, I kept on tasting the wine mm. and it was so good. So what should have I done? And that's the thing. O3, some people spoke too quickly. All the time it happens after harvest, mm -hmm. giving a judgment. That I, I mentioned the, the notion of patience earlier. It's key. It's, it's a notion of humility as well. It goes with humility. You don't never insult the future mm -hmm. or the past. And the wine has its own reason. You, you need to, I, you, no, you can't force a wine if it's not ready. You can't judge it if it's not ready. 
So, you know, a lot of people talk too early about O3 after harvest. And, and, and we, 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 we work on our vintage, our blends at, at Maison BP in general in March, uh, in April. We, we just started actually a little earlier this year because we harvested earlier. So we just started this week, we did the first uh, base wine tasting, but so we, you need time. So to re I'm sorry, that was a long way around, but to, to reply to your question, Even if, of course, we have in mind all the efforts and work we're putting in our vineyards, uh, yes, yes, most of the time, it shouldn't be raining. Um, most of the time, uh, uh, it pays off. But sometimes we, we, sometimes it does not. And sometimes, uh, you know, what matters is what is in the past, many selection. Yeah. Yeah, so so it's this again this continued quest mm -hmm. for for you know taste this continued quest for what works and and I love what you say about humility you know and not judging the past not judging the future and I think that just again goes to the character the character of this wine the character of Maison BP the character of what you're trying to do and accomplish and and I just think that was so beautifully said so merci beaucoup for that. Um, so, you know, spe speaking of you, your your history with the house, talk to us about how you came back to Maison BP and talk to us about um, the founding with your father, because I love the story and, and I will share my connection with, with, with your father's story with this in a second. But, but tell me, please, how everything uh, came to be. You have a little joke. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, my family, I mean, we are no family from here, but a young house. An old family from here because we've always been here. My grandfather, great grandfather, etc., were uh, growers and brokers. Um, the broker being the person make, being the link between the grower growing the grapes and the house locating the grapes uh, since 1704. So it's incredible. <laughs> we, well, uh, so champagne, it's, well, but um, my grandfather uh, was not the eldest son, so he had he didn't inherit the major family vineyards. He had just a bit of wine from his mother. So he was a, a, a grower, but too, too small a grower. So he also worked as a broker. Uh, and my cousin started like that, working with him. And that's, that was important because that, 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 that I spoke of that open window earlier today. And I think that's uh, when, when you have this experience of a broker, you, you don't only know about your village, but you go and taste the next village and the next village and the next village, etc. So it suddenly opens also, um, a, a, you know, very, very, very interesting perspectives. Um, and, uh, and, and the more he, he did that, the more he wanted to make his own wine. I mean, that I think it's, um, it's understandable. He tried to convince his father at the time, but there was a, 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 a generational, no, it, it, it didn't, <laughs> didn't work. So he said, okay, fine, he, he left and he started his own adventure. So completely physically speaking and financially speaking and uh, from, from zero because he didn't have land or inventory or uh, nothing, but culturally he had of course a lot and um, and he had a, also a very precise vision of the wine he wanted to make because these were the early 80s and it was a moment when Champagne uh, at his generation and it continued with my generation there were a lot of family houses uh, being sold right. for many reasons the French regulations and stuff it makes things very complicated to keep things um within families and um and so the the, the 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 problematic of that is you know we we spoke again third time of patience and time uh and and you need you need to to be demanding and to make wines like this type of wine you need a lot of of time because you start with with a raw material that has the highest facility uh, and, and 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 you need if you choose to keep it pure precisely, if you choose to just civilize it, educate it, but not hide it or, or right. uh, masquerade it, you need time. It's, it's, you cannot do. So time is money. <laughs> money is, you know, time is linked with independence. Um, so a lot of, 
by, by, by the fact of these many houses changing hands, entering into groups with a more financial logic, this also influenced at the time on the character of the wines. And, and that was the development of wines with a lot of oxidoreductive styles, higher dosage, etc. And uh, voila, so he, and, and, and he said, but that's, that's, not, that's not what champagne is about. So, you know, you know what, what is special about us is the Northern character, is the chalky side, that's what we, you know, that's what we want to express in the wines. And this plus that, that's how he started. I love it, I love it. And so he started at 27 ans, he started at 27. That is when that is when I opened Fizz was at 27. So I like to say we have we have that in common. Yeah, a toast to that. Oh, uh, toast to some to that. Okay. You know, if, if some people listen, you know, you, we can all do great things after 27 as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, so speaking of so, Alice, how did we go from from France, from being a Champenoise to going to New York and then going back to back to France, back to ah, Eugenie? Curiosity, but I that and then. I left Champagne for 10 years. Um, I left Champagne. Yeah. That's what I did. I never thought I would, I mean, I never thought I would come back. When I left, all I wanted was to leave. That's all. <laughs> I was uh, 15 and uh, I mean, I was happy in Champagne, but you know, I just wanted to explore. I, I left with no agenda specifically. But that's, I think, I'm, I feel very privileged I could do that because that means I could choose to come back. And that's a wonderful, that's wonderful. I mean, but I mean, every story is different, but I had this privilege I, that I could choose and that I could feel uh, that I belong here, that I needed to come back here. Um, but I've obviously loved uh, the US, but I have been lucky to be also in, in the UK, to be in Italy. And for my studies also in Burgundy, so voilà. But uh, so, um, so no, 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 no. It's a uh, well. It's you know, Champagne is a is a land uh, that is very open. Yeah. That, that has always had a lot of uh, people going coming in, and even you know, in the city of Reims, you have a lot of people who come to work for four or five years. From so it, 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 it's 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 an interesting place. It's a dynamic place actually. It's a small. Yeah. See, but uh, with 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 a nice effervescence, nice uh, interesting people. So yeah, and so then you you came back and and you went to work in the vineyards. And so how did we go? You know, and then I think you oversaw the all of the exporting and the growing of the market for Pinot Bayard internationally. And and then here we are. So how has that journey been? And and all of the different facets that you've had in the house. Well, but that's. Um, well, again, that, that's when also luck comes in because, because we've had uh, plenty of time with my father. I mean, no, I mean, I have good friends who don't have had, you know, and uh, who have had different stories with uh, necessity suddenly to, because of an accident or a sickness or anything like that. Um, here, everything is very slow. I mean, when you plant a vine, you plant it for 70 years. Uh, when you start working on a wine, you know, before, before, before you get the first really beginning of an idea, you need three years minimum and then five or seven or 10, you know, and, um, and, and, and you can learn and study about wine, but blending is something you just can't study. You can study how to taste wine, but blending is something, it's not, it's about tasting, but it's also about trying to imagine how it will become. Uh, and that's the thing. So you just, it's that you need to, to practice and practice and practice. So, um, so what are, every story is different. I came back young, young, early. And so I had plenty of time to, to, to work the vineyards, to work in the cellar, to work on the export markets. And, uh, uh, and I feel very, uh, that's what I wanted to do. I really wanted to, to, to do that. I wanted to be as close as a product as I could. So, but, um, but every story is different, maybe, you know. Well, and it's wonderful. You get to work with your father and, and you get to do all of these things together. And I mean, it really is such a beautiful family affair. And, and I know we talked about your, your three sons, that you're your young children. Um, do you think they're going to 
get into the family business as well when they're older? That's a very, that's, a, that's, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Raymond. Yeah. Yeah. Been, right? <laughs> no, but you know, that's a good question. I, obviously, they'll do, they'll do, they'll do. I, I hope they do what they, what they cherish because I, I think mm. that's how they will be good at what they do. But what I, but, but your question is, is important when it comes to um, sharing uh, yeah. with them. You know, it's important for me um, to, to share with them and, uh, and transmit what I can transmit because, uh, because it starts quite young, actually. And, yeah. if, and if they never see you and if, and if all the result of, of, of what you do is that you're never with them, uh, that's, that's, that's not the right way. Right. <laughs> To transmit the so so it so it is important. You know, it means it means um, taking time to 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 smell, to taste, to to. I mean, it's not a very. I don't know if we can say that on the American social networks, but. Uh, He's so full. He's so full. Say it. Say it. <laughs> but um, no, but but we grew up tasting wine every Sunday. I mean, as when we were seven, and uh, but but tasting with a child is is not about tasting wine. It's anything. Sure. Any spices, any any flower, um, the development of nuances, the sense of nuances, and I think it's particularly at, at the generation of our children. They are not helped with that at all. Mm. Their environment is not helping that, is not helping them at all. I mean, the the, the books, the, the the cartoons, the images they're working, the sound they're hearing, everything is very fast, very strong, yeah. very loud. It's it's so. It's, it's a real, it's the first thing for me at their age, because there are three, eight, nine, is obviously a beginning of knowledge, but more importantly, tasting, fine tuning, nuances. Uh, that's that's the, the first thing to transmit. I love that. I love everything you're saying. It makes me want to go order another 100 cases of champagne for our club. <laughs> it's wonderful. One, one thing too, you know, you mentioned about the, um, I, I think you said, or I, the, the cachet, the kind of hiding and the maquillage, you know, the kind of covering things up, you know, in wine, right? I think we've seen, and champagne keeps getting better in this way, but, you know, we've seen a lot of times people hiding their wine because of perhaps lower quality with higher dosage, right? More sugar or, you know, um, just just younger grapes, but they don't have the energy or the tension to, to age. Whereas for you all, you know, you're very big in that. And I think, has your, did your father do that from the be very beginning? I couldn't remember if he's done extra brut from the beginning. Alors, it was not extra brut at the beginning, but it was, it was in, the, in the early 80s, dosage was not a subject. Right. Everybody was at 15, you know, and he's, he, he always wanted to make low dosage. When we started, he started with what he had. The, it's not just a concept or a statement. I want to do that. You know, it depends what you have. Uh, so, he started with what he had, which obviously was was very good, but also was young. Right. Uh, so he he started with when he was around nine. He was below ten from day one. But and through the years, what happened was two things. First, uh, you don't see that with this wine because it's a single vintage. But our multi vintages. We call them multi-vintage because we keep our perpetual reserve as a Solera system, with, where, where the vintages are blended the one with the other. So that's a system my father started in 85, so four years after he founded the Maison. And so with the years going on, these reserve wines gained in age. Gaining in age, they also gained in, in a form of softness. This, plus the fact that Little by little, also we acquired our own vineyards. Or we started farming grapes ourselves, which gave us one decision in terms of harvest and maturity level of the grapes. So, and that's, so that's the two things that depending on, on, on us in a way. And the third thing is also, of course, is the evolution of maturation in the vineyards with the climate. Yeah. So, you know, that's how through the years he moved from uh, nine to eight and then from eight to seven and then from seven to six and then from six to five. And actually when I, when I, when I joined in 2007, I realized we were, all the ones were below six grams actually. Um, so they were all extra brut. 
And at that moment, that was 13, 14 years ago, yeah. And okay. actually, it's interesting to see that at that time, when we asked our importers, oh, by the way, um, would you like us to write extra brut on the label? And they all are very fine wine people. Well, they told us, you know, so many people have had bad experiences with extra brut that, you know, maybe it's not necessary to write it. Um, and, and so we said, okay, you know, we trust you, you know, we make the wine, you sell the wine. <laughs> we, 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 and, and then, you know, a few years later, we changed, the, we did some changing on the label. And at that time we said, okay, no, we want to write it. So we write it on the back label discreetly, not on the front label. It's on the back label for people who are curious and want to have information on the wine. And voila, but it, but it has been all below six grams for 13, 14 years now. And, and yeah, it's been, it's always been the same quest again, but you know, right. It's reason. about it's about continuing. It's that continuation of the quest. You know, you're at this point, so you now can do this. You're at that point, you can now do that. But so, I do think it's important for people to know that you all were doing that mm -hmm. long time, really, before so many were. Before it was, you know, in vogue. Before it was, you know, in style. You were doing it, but you weren't doing it to be in vogue or be in style. You were doing it because of the quality of grapes that you had and the quality of wine. You didn't have to hide it by higher dosage. Yeah, and but that's that's and that's that's really because that's what we want to show about our terroir. That's uh, that's uh, oh. you, that's really uh, that's what's interesting uh, to us. But it's a paradox because, as you said, now it's becoming in vogue. Mm -hmm. So now I find myself explaining that dosage matters and is important and has a role to play in the balance of the wine. I mean, it's it's ridiculous, but because well, it's true, it's true. Yeah, but because now you have the extreme, in, it has to have no dosage. It's like, why not? Why? Why not? I mean, but balance, balance, harmony, yes. respect for the wine, respect for actually the amateur opening that bottle and sipping it. And we're not drinking concepts. We're drinking a wine that must, you know, that must respect you with 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 a quality, balance, harmony. Not it's not just something to feed your your, your intellect. It must feel your your soul and your palate as well. And so balance is important, harmony is important. And, and dosage plays a role in the post evolution of the wine as well, in yep. the post development evolution of the wine. It's very interesting too for that. But that's another theme. We could do another. We'll do another we'll, thing on that. We'll do another thing. Yeah, I, 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 and that would be fascinating. Tasting, oh tasting the, the, the classical multi vintage premier cuvee with the classical disgorgement date of like six months. Mm. And then the same wine with three years disgorgement. Yes. Six years disgorgement, nine years disgorgement. And that's fascinating. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, and we've had the, uh, we've had the premier cuvee, uh, the rosé, the brute and the rosé at Fizz as well, too. So we've definitely highlighted those and featured those. And they are so beautiful. And, um, you know, I do think, again, it's, it's what you said, we are not drinking, I wrote it down because it's so good. We are not drinking concepts, we are drinking wine. And I think that is just phenomenal because you can say all these things like go fizz yourself. But if at the end of the day, it's not, you know, if we're not feeding the soul and the palate, then it doesn't matter what you say, right? And and I think, again, that is the quest of purity that you're doing. And it just uh, is just wonderful. And I think this wine, along with so many in the gamme, you know, toute la gamme, it provides this energy and this tension, you know, and uh, it's just really, really wonderful to get to to drink this wine with you today. It truly is. Ooh, Lala, we've spoken a lot, huh? <laughs> I know. Well, I know. And so um, I, I think that if anybody has any questions, feel free as we're wrapping up to post them or you can post them afterwards. We are going to be sharing this on our YouTube, on our Instagram as well. This is live on Facebook. And all of our club members will also be receiving this in the email. And I think too, at least we received, I mean, we got the last of of the of the 06. I mean, it's it's no more. <laughs> you did because you did because I have uh, refused several orders that, that, that winter. <laughs> Sadly, I'm not happy to refuse uh, orders, of course, particularly in 2020, but you know, when the wine is gone, the wine is gone. So <laughs> you know, and if some of you still have, you know, with this wine. Any wine, actually, but uh, the empty glass is very interesting to smell. Mm. It's impressive. Like my glass is empty and has been empty for at least ten minutes. A few uh, moments. <laughs> and so, 
you have a concentration of the essence and what remains here is, is it like um, the, the, the cacao uh, powder? Yeah, uh, yeah the, the, the chocolate powder, yeah. The torrefaction sensation. And that tells you where what the next step will be, uh, where oh. the wine is going through. This is why when we, when we work on the base wines, we mostly work on the nose because mm. The, the, the palate, of course, is very important. The palate is 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 a now, is a present, but the nose is is the future, the evolution. So, um, I love that's that. very that, that's beautiful. I'm going to have to catch up with you so I can do that, but it's going to be a few minutes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So then, just a few final thoughts. We're we're in 2020. I know we had the earliest har harvest on record in in August. Um, how has, you know, you're now, you said you're just kind of starting to taste and, and see the Van Clair. How is 2020 shaping up as a harvest? Will we get some joy from 2020 um, via a millisime? <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> Praise God. Hooray. Um, uh, alors, I don't, 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 don't take it as a declaration for us because when, when, the, the decision for a vintage comes in several times. There is, of course, the moment of assemblage, but then we revalidate these choices through the years tasting the wine, etc. But clearly, um, well, 2020, it's, it's, it's a, in French, on peut dire c'est un peu une année en trompe l'œil. Uh, you know, when, when, when you, you have the impression to see one thing, but it's not real. Uh, right. Because... Yeah, I... If you look just at the, the averages and the, 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 the great uh, figures of, uh, you know, rain, sand, temperatures, you almost feel it was a normal year, just a slightly warmer year. But uh, the, the, the truth is that it was very hectic, um, very, it, it, it had very different uh, um, moments and chapters and a lot of rain in the winter right. um, that dropped in the summer. Um, mild winter, uh, but two very cold episodes in the beginning and the end of the spring, um, and heat, but not so much sun. I mean, a lot of sun in the spring. In the spring here, it was uh, locked on, in March, April. I mean, it was incredible. We could see the, the hour by hour, we could literally see the plant growing because there had been so much water in the ground from the winter and suddenly so much sun. Um, that it grew very fast, but then in this we had rain again in June and a very dry summer, very dry and very warm summer, but with not so much sun exposure. So it was it was not easy. Decision harvest for harvest was not so easy because when you have uh, the paradox is that the, the, the maturation can be blocked. Right. It's not because it's very warm or. Uh, that, that suddenly it ripens. You also need water. So that's that's when I said chalk is key. I mean, it has always been, but it's becoming even more um, as, as time goes by. And, um, and uh, yeah, so it was about waiting enough so that we have proper maturation, proper generosity and expression on the fruit, but, you know, not too long as well to, to preserve the right balance. Right. So... Uh, so the results, I can I can only start. Uh, we started this week tasting all the first pressings that were uh, fermented in stainless steel, and then you know uh, as in March it would be all the barrels tasting. We have approximately 400 barrels to taste. Um, so of course the vision is not complete yet, but. Um, but it's it's interesting. We have uh, uh, not we haven't reached. We have had 18, 19, 20, three good years in a row. That's for sure. We haven't reached the maturity of nineteen, mm. but we have a higher maturity than eighteen. So we are in between these two. We have a lower acidity, but we also have a lower pH. Um, so the wines. Um, the Chardonnays are a bit more uh, advanced at, at this stage. Pinots are also, the three grapes are beautiful. Honestly, the three grapes are beautiful. I can say, I, I, I won't say much more that I, I'd rather speak again about that end of March or early April. But for the moment I can say, I see no, 
um, I see a strong homogeneity quality in, in, the, in, the, in the quality. Um, and I, I see uh, a certain density um, in the maturation. Uh, voilà, but, but, uh, but, but voilà, not, not also not a very strong maturity or not a very strong acidity. It's not a vintage that exits the, 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 the key balance. It, 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 it seems to me at this stage to be relatively well balanced. Voilà. Well, I'm, ex I'm, ex I'm excited, but of course, I'm sure I'll have to wait nine years before I get to taste it, something like that, if, if it does become a vintage, as you all age beautifully and long time and take your time. So with that, uh, Alice, merci beaucoup to everybody watching. We've just been so honored to have you with us. And, you know, I was supposed to be in Champagne in, in uh, 2019 for Le Printemps. And of course, that was a new year. And 2020 continues to be, but I look forward to hopefully seeing you in France in 2021, j'espère. And uh, when you can travel, we so look forward to hosting you at Fizz and doing a really cool tasting of the different Bruno Bayard champagnes with, with our club. Okay, wonderful. That would be super nice. And I hope to have you here. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you everyone for being with us. And, um, and, uh, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a pleasure to share. Thank you, thank you Raymond, for uh, sharing champagne so much. It's, it's our pleasure. From one cheap champagne officer to another. <laughs> Cheers. Santé. Okay.